Hi, this video is about the aesthetic approach, one approach I have to taking sports photography images that I've been using since the late 1980s up until the 2020s. Now, if you're here to watch this video, that means you know a lot already about uh, how to capture sports photography f-stop shutter speed. Uh, and if you don't know, please, I gotta have notes. <laughs> I've got to have notes on this one. If you do not know about the role play of f-stops and shutter speeds, message me down in the, in the uh, message area down there and uh, I'll reply with something very brief about how that all works. But this is the time of year when parents and college students and everybody shooting sports on the sidelines, football, uh, maybe some baseball, soccer, all this outdoor, this is specific to outdoor sports, and it's something that I figured out a long time ago, and it's not unique to me. Uh, if you watch pro football games or any outdoor pro sports, you will see this happening on the sidelines if you watch and pay attention to the photographers on the sideline. Now, let me show you some of these images. Uh, they're from my decades of, of being a sports photographer as part of my overall uh, photography that I do. There's gonna be a lot more uh, background on how I got to be uh, so into shooting sports from the time uh, in San Diego to, to present day and uh, how uh, that all came around in the background in the deeper dive. So when you look at these photographs, look at these, look at these things and from recently, actually we're going to start with the past, look at John Elway, look at this pro football image, look at this pro golfer, club soccer, college soccer, high school football, wakeboarding, and even a dance shot that I did for Texas Women's University here in Denton, Texas. What do these all have in common? When you look at these images, you can, you can back this up and go slow and freeze frame on these images to see what, what you think you see, then I'm gonna tell you. It's the angle. It's the angle at which I captured these photographs that made the difference in how they look. So the angle of shooting is very important when shooting outdoor sports. And for me, if you look at these, look at these images, they're all the same angle, which what it does, I'm shooting from a low angle. And what that does is that cleans the background up, but more importantly, it has, has some great, uh, great benefits besides just cleaning up the background. It's better to see the person's face if they're wearing a helmet. Think about the San Diego Charger. Think about John Elway. He's pretty tall, but the San Diego Charger's hunched down and running. If I wasn't down below his eye level, his eyes would be covered by the front of his helmet. So that's something to remember right there is that if you're shooting little kids peewee sports and you're shooting down on them, Bad idea, bad idea. You need to be at their eye level or even lower so that they're higher up in the frame. Another thing about low camera angle on the field, and the, it captures both the, the altitude and the distance a player is actually moving. You can see the bottom of their feet. Look at their feet. You can see their feet, the soles of their shoes when they're running. And that gives you an idea of speed, motion, and action. And that's what you want. There's more to sports than what I'm telling you right now. But for now, we're talking about something that'll get you out there and start shooting better sports photography right away. Regardless of your mechanical abilities, if you change... <laughs> You gotta have them. You better regard them. You've got to have mechanical abilities. But if you change your angle, that helps immensely. And one more factor here a lower angle will clean up your backgrounds. So when you're down low, you don't have feel back behind there. You've got 
clean, distant background. Instead of the field falling off behind the person, you're down low now, so the field is like this to your eye level, and that is what cleans your background up and emphasizes shallow depth of field because you know you're shooting wide open. And that is one of the things that really, really makes a difference is cleaning up your backgrounds. So don't Photoshop a clean background or change the angle. This is, this is shooting for real. Those first images were shot on film, eight frames per second manual focus. So you got an idea that I kind of knew what I was doing back then. <laughs> I rely a lot on autofocus and cameras that do a lot of the work now at 20 frames a second. So, and I can do up to 60 frames a second. So that's a lot different animal now. But that, those are the things. What you want to do when you get there is take a good hard look at your, at your surroundings, the crown of the field. The crown of the field makes a difference. There's a crown on that field so it drains. Pay attention to where you are, where the action is on the crown. Another thing is if you're shooting fast moving pro level or college level sports, you better be able to get up and run. I never got run over, but I definitely got run into a couple times at pro sports because I thought I could stop these guys by putting my hand out and they pushed me back to, to the wall. So that's one of those things. All right, let me go one more time. Low angle, monopod, down low, shooting out that way. And what that'll do is better see a player's face. San Diego Charger guy's face is a perfect example. It also captures distance of travel and height of, of altitude of the person in the air. Look at the dancer. Uh, and both of these things, those add intensity to your image. Much more intense image when you can get a sense of speed, direction, altitude, and just the intensity of eyes too, looking out for the next next guy coming trying to tackle or do whatever. And or impact with a soccer image, so, you know, and a header, things like that. So those are the things. Feel free to think before you shoot. Think about the angle of this light if you're if you're shooting in the daytime. Think about the crown on the field. Think about the cleanest of backgrounds behind the action of the team you are covering. And you're covering a person or a team. And if you're photographing kids sports, get down get down low on their level okay guys thanks for watching this brief episode on how to shoot better sports aesthetically speaking and i hope you like and subscribe and we're off and running folks i just wanted to get this one out before um, the seasons are all over thanks for watching